What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So this is just something I was thinking about this morning and uh, I just wanted to make a quick video on it because I think it's something that could help you out. Um, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use grouped and ungrouped geometry and the way that geometry sticks together in order to make some quick changes in your model. If you want to get really in depth on this concept I talk about it a lot more in my course where I talk through exactly how you should be grouping things and setting them up so that changes can be easy in your model. But for today's video, let's just go through some quick tips and some things that you can use um, to use the way that geometry sticks together to model better in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things you might have noticed in SketchUp by default is the way that geometry works when it's not grouped together. And so let's say for example that I have this oval shape and I was to push pull it up right here. Well one of the things you might have noticed is if you take this top face and you move it around, which you're going to have to like tap the arrow keys in order to do that to lock it to an axis because uh, SketchUp doesn't like to do that by default. But you might notice that the geometry is kind of stretching and deforming because these two faces are connected by geometry. And so if we were to look at the hidden geometry in here, you can see how this is basically made up of a number of different edges and faces that run between this face and this face. Well, what that means is that means if we were to come in here and scale this, for example, you might notice that when I scale this in about the center, these edges are adjusting to match up with this, right? And so that's basically just the way that the geometry um, associates with itself in order to create 3D shapes. So you've probably seen me at this point, you've seen me do this example right here where I have two boxes, and then if I take one box and I move it against the other box, they stick together, right? And so that's due to the way that the geometry sticks together, the sticky geometry. And so we can use that to our advantage in several different ways inside of our models. So for example, one of the ones that you've already seen is let's say that we were to draw a circle like this and we wanted a cone shape that kind of like tapers inward a little bit at a time, right? So what I could do is I could just select these faces, just extrude them up and then scale them in in order to create this shape. And then I could also move this up and down in order to adjust the overall shape of this object using that sticky geometry. Um, so that's something that you can use for more like organic style modeling, but there's also some practical things that I really kind of hammer on in the course about why grouping geometry is really important. Because if you remember when we've got our two boxes, right? Um, if our geometry is just raw, geometry, like it's just faces and shapes inside of SketchUp, it's going to merge together when you move these objects against each other. So if I move this apart, these stick together. However, if I was to select this and then group it and group this geometry like this, now the faces aren't going to stick together. And so you need to be really intentional about the way that you group your geometry together so that you can use this in the best possible way. And so one thing that you guys might have seen, and these are some models that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse, but then I exploded them. But if you've ever downloaded a model and you click inside of it like this, and you can select all of the individual faces, it's very frustrating because it's almost impossible to make changes. The reason why it's impossible to make changes is because all of this individual individual geometry is in here on its own. And so if you were to ever try to like scale this down or anything like that, notice how you start getting all of these issues in here. That's because this object and these objects are all connected together because they're all raw geometry. So one of the things that I always recommend in my course is I recommend that you group things like your walls. So you would take this wall, right? select it all, so I triple clicked and then I would click on make group. And then I also have my walls and windows in their own groups. And so what's powerful about this is now if I need to make a change, like for example, moving my window around, I can just move the window to wherever I want it to go. Then I can just adjust the wall geometry in here to match. So let's say, and this isn't best practice, but we'll do it anyway. Let's say you were to scale this window over to make it smaller. Right, so if you were to kind of scale this window over, now it's really easy to come in here and just double click inside of this wall group. And you can just pick up this wall geometry and move this edge over to align with that window opening. And so what that means is that means that making changes is really easy. And so let's say we wanted to make a change to this door or even get a new door, 
right? Well, what we could do is we could come in here and with this one where everything's kind of raw geometry, if I select everything and then I delete this door out, notice how I lose my face, right? Well, the reason I've lost my face is because this is all merged together because we weren't diligent in making sure that our door and frame were in their own separate group. However, in this group over here where I group my wall, and I group my door, basically all I have to do is just delete out this door and my opening is still here. Well, because my opening is still here, I can just go pull down a new model from the 3D warehouse and bring that in here. And then I can just take this and I can just push pull this face or use the move tool on this face in order to adjust the size of the opening for my new door. So by grouping this and keeping this separate, um, it really helps us um, keep everything organized and make changes a lot easier inside of our model. And so there's other examples of this as well. So let's say for example, and I've talked about this before, but let's say that you had some kind of a waterfall edge on a countertop, right? And this countertop turns down over this cabinet right here. Well, let's say, and this is a dynamic component I've brought in from the 3D warehouse, but let's say that this cabinet needed to go down to like 30 inches wide. So if I apply this, notice how now my cabinet is in here and it's not as wide as it was before. Well, one of the things we can do is we can use the sticky geometry in here in order to quickly adjust this to align with this edge. So all I would do is just select it and then I could just use the move tool to move this geometry over. And notice how, as long as I'm moving this along the red axis, this is just moving that in geometry and the top of my cabinet is adjusting along with that movement. So you can use that to really quickly move and align things inside of your model if you group things separately. So let's just take this, and let's just move it over so that it aligns with this object. So now, you can see how I can quickly make those changes um, just based on the fact that I have these all grouped as their own geometry. And so there's other things you could do this for as well. So say you do get a model um, from the 3D warehouse or something like that and everything is kind of um, not grouped. Well, let's say for example that I had this wall in here and I wanna move it like three feet this way, right? So let's say we were to use the dimension tool or the uh, tape measure tool and draw a guide three feet over. Well, what I could do is I could come in and model that whole wall again, or I could just pick up the geometry associated with this wall in a selection. Be very careful, by the way, of what's behind your object. So notice how I picked a top-down view so that I wouldn't accidentally pick up other geometry. If you were to try to do this like this and accidentally pick up like edges and faces, it creates a really big mess. But if I was to select this direction, pick this geometry up, I can just move this over and there aren't really any changes or any issues with doing that. Now, if you do have like a texture applied to this face, that might get a little bit weird. So you have to be careful, but having this in your toolkit in case you need to make quick changes to ungroup models is something that can be really helpful for you. So that's just a quick tip for how you can use grouped and ungrouped geometry, not only to stay organized, but also to make quick changes inside of your model. So we talk a lot more about how to set up a model um, so that those changes are quick and easy inside of the course, which you can check out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But either way, hopefully these tips are helpful to you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below of if you knew about these, if you're using tips like this inside of your modeling. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.